with Grog and Esmeralda, carry is perfect. Whoa. Carry is absolutely perfect. Yep. There you go. Call Bar the... just predicted every single drop right here, ladies and gents. He is rolling. <laughs> Call the carry. I mean, look, it makes sense, right? You don't ban the Grog. You force, you force RSG to pick the Grog. You force RSG to kind of pick a, a tankier EXP laner. And in return, you pick the carry so that you can then counter, or quote unquote, counter that. But we see Derry on the Grog. Derry's Grok is formidable. I don't think he's gonna take this die. Uh, on, he's not gonna die that easily. Not only just that, the Grok is also a very good answer over to the far side going to the Feather Airstrike, right? So, yeah, wow, I haven't said Feather Airstrike in, in a, a long, long time. time. Yeah, man. This and don't is, forget, yeah, I mean, Grok's, Grok's um, Guardian Wall, right? Mm -hmm. That is probably like made to disrupt the Feather Airstrike. And like, you don't have any other reason to use it except to block people. Block creeps. Yeah, because this is the kind of uh, draft that lead just ignores the walls, right? Paquito, Fredrin are just going to start, you know, abusing the fact that they have a lot more lockdowns as compared to bleed. All right, so keep in mind, right, that I think on the side of bleed as well, they are playing a composition that wants to go all in onto one target. They want to move around the map. They want to pick off targets, and I think that with this lineup, they're going to be able to do that. So the question is, are they going to execute it properly this time? Right now, it's just uh, standard starts coming up both sides. Uh, both teams, ooh, looking at the litho already. I think that is, yeah, Yon securing that one away instead. But Brace not too far away in terms of the EXP lead. They're all just going to be poking each other and of course they're having a really good idea as to how their damage fares against the, uh, the enemies. Uh, to be honest, the early game isn't really much of a and most entertaining part of the game. But of course, understanding how the funnel works and how the macro coming from both of these teams, who do they well, prioritize? Understandably for Bleed, right? They would want to prioritize onto the gold lane a little bit more, while RSG wants to focus on the EXP lane a tad on. bit more. Hold on, guys. Seiji is going for a Brave Smite Emblem instead. Usually you think when you see this, carry. it could go into a tank carry, but tank carry was nerfed a couple of patches ago. Hard. It was nerfed pretty hard as well, but we still saw some people picking, picking it. Yeah. So, okay. it could be a tank Maybe carry? Maybe you've forgotten to change the emblem? Nah, okay, we, ju we just have to see uh, the items later on. Yeah, but maybe it's way. because, you know, you get to lane properly against CS. Don't forget, Moskov can be quite punishing in the early game, does a lot of damage. But now, Turtle has spawned. Well, these two seem to gain it. Godzilla should be able to take all the way to level 4. Gear doesn't have level 4 yet. Has to back off to respect RSG. RSG is all rather spread out. Dairy is definitely having a very good idea as to where Jay and Dawn is at this point in time. But the Feather Asteroid is just going to be popped here in the middle lane, just ensuring that they will be able to create quite a decent zone to ensure that Dairy, Godzilla, and Bray is not going to come anywhere close. That Godzilla's own Ooh. Feather Asteroid is just going to be popped, but it doesn't seem like they managed to do much to kill anyone. So Keto's HP did manage to drop all the way down to a sliver, so that is pretty much good enough. The last Insanity is just going to be popped as well as the... Uh, Appraisal's uh, Wrath from Yon very essentially helped them to pick up the, the, uh, the turtle all for themselves. And RSG, they know that they can't follow up anymore from this point onwards. They're gonna have to back off. Yeah, I blame the Litho right there. I right? bleed securing the Litho right there gives a lot more EXP lead over to Yon. That's why he's able to secure it. He's level 5 first, while Bray is only stuck at level 2. One kill for one turtle. I'm not sure if that's a necessarily good trade, but we do see RSG leading the gold lead by just about 50 gold. Oh wait, it's going back and forth. It's still almost net-net at this point of the game. The fights are pretty close so far, hey? Yeah, definitely in the early game, but hold on a second. That's Derry. Wild Charge already committed. Spear of Destruction will whip. It doesn't seem like Godzilla will be able to get away with this alive. Oh, never mind. Did manage to uh, manage to bleed with a quick little uh, feathered air strike. We're hoping that they will be able to get a little bit more zoning and control over to the side of Godzilla. But fortunately, that raid from Bleed didn't really work too well as Bleed, uh, as Bray still have managed to take his own purple buff. Yeah, you can see the gold energy in the mid lane uh, for the side of RSG turrets. Uh, it's kind of low. It means that Bleed is actually doing quite well in the mid lane priority. But oh, I think Bray, uh, that, that swipe right there just kind of forced Bray to use the last insanity to just get out. This game is, uh, you can definitely feel the players, the air being really, really, really heavy, I think, on the side of both teams right now. Tension is extremely, extremely high. Uh, we do see a potential gank happening in the EXP lane. Yep, for, uh, they're just gonna ignore that for now because RSG is already right there. 
Turtle's gonna spawn in the bottom lane instead. Both of these two teams are just freezing it and not giving as much information as possible. They know more or less where each other is, so they're just uh, psyching it up. They just don't want to lose anybody, especially when the turtle should be spawning right about now. All right, I have a question for both you guys. Why the Esmeralda pick into this team comp? Uh, we're just oh, going to hold that thought for a little bit and come back to that question. As we do have Jay as well as Gear finding himself pretty darn low. Jay right behind the turret popping off with the Feathered Asteroid. Very effectively dispatched the x ball. Yeah, and that's one person that you don't want to lose, especially going into the turtle fights. Don't forget RSG secured two turtles in game number one, allowed them to kind of remain relevant in the fight. But to answer that question earlier just now, I think the Esmeralda, but hold on, second gear. We are not going to be able to touch on the topic for any time soon, <laughs> there, Mims. But we do have Closer that's just going to be finding himself sticking right onto Yon as well. So get new, build up onto the shields and the stacks, just ensure that he stays around the fight like a very pesky mosquito. Yep, Turtle giving over to Bleed right there. RSG, yep, you can start to see Godzilla picking up a core item. In fact, Closer already picked up the book as well. So, yeah, that's item power spike for the side. RSG just waiting for him to pop off. Bleed, on the other hand, you know, Jay should be hitting the power spikes first, especially with the Feather Airstrike. But I want to see him using it to zone most of the time. But whoa, hold on a second. Instead of going for the Lightning Trunk, and he went for the Blood Wings instead. And now Gear finds himself facing the ground and he um, was not able to do anything from this point onwards. RSG have managed to successfully pick up Gear once again. All of these pick-up tactics from RSG is working out pretty darn nicely. Sekiru so just joined into the fray here in the middle lane, forcing Godzilla to uh, expend a flicker in order to get himself to safety. Yep, top side. Seiji putting uh, 1v2 once again, but that's so normal for the side of JJ. Does not have the Feather Airstrike, so he's just gonna let Bray just walk off limping away. Right now, it's just too equal. I can't really seem to tell who is actually picking up any form of sleep. Honestly, I think it's, it's, are we, in terms of gold, right? Bleed is 1k gold ahead at this point. Bray looking really low. Bray going down to the hands of Seiji. Well, now we also have the wild charge from the side of Derry, hoping that he will be able to connect in on the gear to do a little bit more. CS completely untouched while well, he's just getting some free hits. The Appraisal's Wrath just going to be landing on top onto <laughs> a decent amount of people. While well, Yon just going to be soldiering through all three members banking on him. And he knows just how tanky he is. RG doesn't really have enough damage there, Kwok. Yeah, I was gonna say, Fredrin is one beefy boy. He's just walking away as if nothing happened. And but do you see what I mean just now, right? This team composition that Bleed has picked is meant to do this. Oh, Godzilla did not really quite respect some safe distancing away from Sagitno. Oh, that was still 2019. I know, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so like I was saying, right? Like, this is what Bleed is trying to do. They're trying to move around the map as a team. They're trying to pick off and get one or two kills every time they gank a lane. And that's how they're going to get their advantage oh, for the rest of the game. Blade down to the bottom lane. Wild Chart connect down to the Seiji. How is Seiji going to get himself away? No way he can. No way, Jose. Training Conceal just for that one is extremely well, right? Like, especially how uh, you give the kill over to CS as well. But it seems like Bleed will be focusing on the turtle instead. Dewey should not be getting in there. <laughs> just be a little bit cheeky showing that maybe RSG, uh, maybe Bleed should back off because RSG is in the area. RSG call, uh, sorry, Bleed calls the bluff and takes the turtle from there. Right now, it's a three turtle lead to Bleed. Bleed has gotten everything that they want. Yeah, and not only just that, not only just the three turtles have secured, there's also secured uh, three turrets of RSG already. So there's a lot more space for them to work with. But I don't know why we're, we're not really excited about this. Maybe because we've seen how Bleed, you know, can just squander it away just in the blink of an eye, especially in game number one. Yeah, I mean, look, this once RSG gets the goal, uh, gets the turrets to go, it's going to even out quite a bit. It's already down to 1k right now, and RSG still has two turrets left. It's This game is very similar to the first one, actually. The pace is it's quite slow. The both teams kind of respecting each other. Still trying to do jabs when they should be doing crosses at this point. Um, but... I mean, both teams just giving utmost respect. They do not want to waste any kind of opportunity that they see the other team give. Yep, looking at the damage dealt, highest in the chart right here is Jay. Uh, evidently, because of Feather Airstrike is an AoE burst, uh, he's starting to use it quite well, in my opinion, just finding the pickoffs, and that's extremely something that RSG need to pay a lot of attention. A very low kill score kind of game right now. Bleed is just trying to macro it out instead. 
and they are doing extremely well, right? Three towers gone already. They're being a they're able to push in all their lanes as well. Um, the RZ having to be playing a little bit defensively. Wow, Brave Pop the last insanity really, really early. I guess he just did not want to get caught. Like I said, I think both teams are giving a bit too much respect to each other at this point, but they are also confident that one mistake can cost and end their whole MPL season. Yeah, and not only just that, right? <laughs> like the fact that you don't want to go to the lower brackets, especially if you're bleed right now. You don't really want to make any mistakes. Sorry, respect over time. The RRG is completely normal. You don't disrespect Bray. Yes, he is an Xbox. Yes, he he should not be that tanky. But my man knows the limits and the ins and outs of this particular hero. You can see the fact that Ezra already committed. But I saw a bleed to secure and zone for the Lord. Lord goes over to bleed. All the main objectives are being taken by the side of bleed right now. The question is, what are they going to do with this lead? We're looking at about 2,000 gold lead, but hold on a second. We do have Sage's HP all the way dropped down as Bray, as well as Closer. They did manage to find themselves connecting down to Sage. They went straight in for the most important player at hand, and that is Sage himself. In the meantime, Jay all the way to the back line with the event that Airstrike also did manage to get the quick clip down onto CS. But Dewey with the power of nature uh, closes things out as well as the oh, barriers getting himself a double kill. Might be even to get himself a triple, would be funny, but Godzilla takes the final hit onto the final member of Bleed. Oh, five man wiped out. That's not exactly what you want if you're supporting Bleed right here, but there is a Lord marching up top. It's gonna get squandered away, and look at the Goat Lead. Swings back in the favor of RSG. And keep in mind that turrets have not been taken yet, right? Turrets are gold pockets which RSG can cash into should they choose to. And that was definitely a fight that Bleed was afraid of, right? We saw, we talked about how both teams were playing extremely carefully, but the thing is that if you play too carefully, this is what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. One wrong moment is gonna be extremely detrimental. It, it, it feels like, you know, back then when you're doing math, right? The more you feel like, yeah, I'm gonna make a careless mistake, the more careless mistakes you're making, and that's exactly what's happening to Bleed. So, Bleed, they only have much. They, they don't really have a lot of, um, Win conditions that they kind of have to go for. They are uh, their backline is just constantly being jumped, and I think that that is more or less a good amount, a good amount of answer as to why Esmeralda is being taken. Not necessarily all on the shield that he's able to get. It's a small little bonus getting the shields away from the side of Sagitnu, but being able to jump freely and effectively <laughs> onto Seiji is very important. The amount of shields that you are able to bring up for yourself, it also helps you against a carry. I believe that RSG have already expected that, yes, Seiji, uh, our fleet is going to pick up a carry. So getting Yon. shields is better than getting more HP. In the meantime, Yon finds himself slave of health. He doesn't seem like he's not taken down just yet. He's slowly walking away, but he's going to be facing Bray. He do have the appraisal's rep to try to bring himself back online for a little bit. Seiji, J as well as Akitnu runs all the way back home, Ooh. while Bray all over at the side still manages to Flip onto Yon. Oh, it looks like Bleed is crumbling right now under the pressure. But, you know, RSG picking off the team one by one. Jay still alive. Manages to run away with this bird form. Uh, Godzilla stealing uh, the feather airstrike and using it himself to zone. They can end away. Last insanity, hoping that he will be able to get a kill down as a kid. No, yes, he will be able, able to successfully do so. RSG doing the near impossible by turning the tables completely around, granting Bleed a 2 0. RSG knocking Bleed down to the lower brackets. This is an outcome that wasn't expected by the fans as well. Uh, yeah, Kwa is just like celebrating right there, uh, uh, if you guys can see it. Uh, but you, you get to see Bleed in terms of the results. They were smacking RSG in the regular season. But hey, in terms of the playoffs, there's a three weeks gap and three 